Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So I've got a little confession to make. Um, for a very, very long time, I've been a surface plate abuser. It's a dirty little machine shop secret that uh, probably most of us are guilty about. So let's go take a look at what I'm talking about. And the good news is, is there's a better way to do it and uh, to save your surface plates. So let's go check this out. So what I'm talking about is the practice of using sandpaper on top of a surface plate. So we all do it, okay, just admit it, okay, I do it, and uh, we detail parts on top of a surface plate like that, right? It's a really, really common practice. Now, what people forget about is this is actually a precision instrument, and uh, it's a perfectly flat plane, or a very per nearly perfectly flat plane, and granite actually wears, and it actually wears pretty fast, and this is one of the fastest things that can make your granite wear is the dust coming off of this gets under the plate and then we have a little bit of shifting and it wears the plate and it also gets under the the bases of your instruments and you actually wear holes in this and some people might be going poo poo granite doesn't wear well if you ever watch your granite surface plates get lapped then you'll see the big holes uh, that you've created in them okay so now there's a couple solutions, thankfully. One is you can just dedicate one plate to using sandpaper on, which is the case with this one, um, until I did something special. Okay. Um, so this one, you know, when I get the, my plates redone, uh, this one will get uh, flattened off, and then uh, it'll probably never have sandpaper on it again. But it's had sandpaper and diamond lapping and all kinds of stuff on it, so it's not. Uh, super precision plate. It's fine for just kind of you know layout work and stuff like that, but not not good for precision measuring. So now, yeah, thankfully, there's a better way, and let's uh, let's check that out. And this was uh, um, spurred me into action by uh, my buddy uh, Robin Renzetti, and he showed uh, his version of uh, a proper sanding plate. So what I did was I converted this big honking chunk of cast iron. Um, this is just a cast iron scrap, 12 inches in diameter. It's an inch and a quarter thick or so. It happens to have a hole in the middle, but that doesn't make any difference. So what I did was I converted this into this. So what this is, is it's the same thing, um, but what we're using here is we're using standard pressure sensitive adhesive um, disc sander discs. Now these are readily available. These are uh, five for 15 bucks from McMaster Car, and you can get them up to uh, 1,000 grit, okay? All the way from eight or 60 to, uh, to 1,000 grit. Um, this one's a 600, and I think what's on here is a 400 is what's on there right now. Um, and then this is, has a peel backing here, and you stick it down, and then you just trim it off. Now these flats are important uh, when you're doing parts. Um, um, this is not a good example, but it, it has an angle on it. And when you do a part that has an overhang like this, it allows you to do that interior surface, right? And come up to the edge, and it has a sharp 90 degree. And this is the this is the negative of doing it on a, a granite surface plate because they tend to have large radii. Now you can buy a 12 by 12 granite surface plate from Shars for like $30, okay, and then you're off to the races. Just stick one of these on it and call it quits, right? Just go and don't worry about it. Um, or you can make one of these. So let's go make one of these and then uh, you guys can enjoy that process and uh, have a cool project for your shop. Okay, 10, 20, 25. So, you know, it's not round, not clearly, right? And um, it's bouncing all over the place. Interpreting what you're seeing on the indicator takes a little bit of practice, you know, because it is an out around condition, right? So you gotta, you gotta fiddle around with it a little bit, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. 
See, it's not staying at the, it's not drifting away from the high, this suddenly changes. So to me, those are lobes that are on this. And um, we got a pretty good average here, I think, is, uh, is where we're at here. So let's just make sure everything's nice and tight here. Thing is, make sure all four are this kind of the same tightness, right? And then um, we'll give it a little, uh, little slap with the, uh, and that's just right where the jaws are, just to make sure we're all the way back. Give it a little spin. That yeah, looks pretty good. Right, we're pretty ready to go here. Um, this side, this is our first side here. We're just gonna basically get this to clean up. We're not super concerned with finish or anything like that. Uh, in this case, we're gonna grind it uh, afterwards just because we can. So, we'll touch off there. See how this behaves. Let's take, uh, take 10 thou off and see if that's enough to clean it up. The socket's actually pretty good. That it looks like. Let's see. Let's that. Oh, that's pretty close, actually. Oh, we got a little bit there of the, of the saw cut. So that was only ten thou. So yeah, I'm gonna take a, just a little bit more off, but I'm okay with that finish. That's fine because this is the back side. We're just creating a reference surface right now. So let's. Uh, I think I'll just take another ten, and. Uh, and then we'll flip it around. I wish I had that much hair. <laughs> Cute. of a cleanup around that thing to get a, a measurement yeah okay I think so let me uh, get an instrument of measurement I'm turning the OD and the only reason is to match the um, um, the sanding disc a little bit better okay the first one of these I made I didn't turn the OD okay 12 inch 050 um, I didn't turn the OD on and um, the uh, the sandy just kind of uh, was hanging over, and it was bothering me. Twelve point zero five five zero. Enter. Okay. All right. So we'll just take it down to twelve, uh, as close to the jaws as we dare, and then we'll flip it over and uh, and dial it in, and then um, um, see if we can get a decent blend. And if we can't, we'll put a groove in the middle. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, this spot didn't quite clean up. Uh, we're still 13 thou oversize here. So it looks like one little spot didn't quite clean up. And hopefully we'll take another 13 off of that and, uh, and that'll clean up. But uh, you know what? I'm going to slow the feed rate down just because uh, I can. And let's take the rest of that. Alright, going down to 12, even right now. Let's 
slower feed rate. Oh boy, that's really slow. That's yeah, okay. I saw it though, a little spot. Oh yeah, that's eh, pretty close. I'm just gonna leave it. That's not gonna bug me too much. <laughs> All right, let's smack a chamfer on that little edge there and then we'll flip around and uh, go to town. Cast iron particles just get in everything. I don't want to blow any more than you know with the air hose any more than I have to because it just pushes that fine stuff down in there. So I'm putting these in because I want to uh, hold it out from the jaws to make sure that I uh, clean up all the way across the, uh, the outside. I hope that makes sense. And we faced the one side, so what we're doing now is we're just gonna check, um, we're just gonna check uh, the position of these in relation to the rotation. So I just want a, a couple, couple thousandths uh, um, compression of the indicator. That way, uh, it doesn't snag it. I need to come back a little. So this is what's nice about this setup is you can just tune it for whatever you're doing there. So now we can drop our disc in there, and we know if we're touching those, uh, we're uh, we're pretty parallel. That makes sense. Pretty parallel. All right, let's put our first copper piece in there. We don't want to mar the finish. Yep. This will leave enough, uh, enough hanging out that uh, I should be able to get the indicator in there. That's the other thing. So you don't want these sticking out. You want them kind of behind the, uh, the front edge of the, uh, the jaw there. So let me uh, put a little grip on that. Okay, so now it's not going to fall out on me. And then uh, when you know when you when you make your adjustments, you got to be a little bit careful. You don't slacken them up too much. To uh, that's, well, that's way out right now. Uh, you don't slacken them up so much that the copper drops out. So, uh, but let's indicate that now. So we're going to put a a little extension on this. This just uh, helps us sneak in like that. We want to be up close to the jaw there. Give a, actually, I'm going to have to give it a fair amount of compression, I think, in this case. Alright, so now we, we can spin uh, 
and not uh, crash our uh, indicator theoretically. So, all right, so let's weigh the hell out. <laughs> So that's the low right there. So I gotta go a little at a time on this in this case here. I'm using the small pretty close now. Close. All right, let's make sure they're all about the same tightness. I still got. I'll probably have to go around it again because uh, I uh, I want to make sure that I tap it up against the, uh, the stoppers there. So it's about right there. I just want to hit right over the the top of them or or even slightly inboard if anything okay that feels pretty smack and solid there let's see what that did to our oh, yeah. this is about as close as it's ever going to be okay nice all right so now we can face and turn and see we'll get a nice blend uh, on that uh, that joint there I rigged up a little blast shield there. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see if uh, this helps. Should. All right. I'm just gonna go to the go to the number. So here's the little blast shield that I rigged up here. So I made some little alligator clamps that uh, fit these dovetails and you can put stuff in there like that and uh, rig, rig, jury rig something up there, so. That little uh, ring and uh, O-ring I put on there really uh, makes that work now. So we're gonna um, we're gonna cut some flats on this, and the reason is is when you have uh, a part that has a ledge on it or uh, an angle or something like that, sometimes it's handy to have a you know a straight edge to uh, uh, to guide it uh, you know in a linear you know along its axis. I guess is what I want to say. In too many words. So we're just going to mark this up, and then we'll um, uh, we'll make them parallel here. The last one I made, I made four, and you don't really need four. Two is fine. Uh, we're going to saw it, and then we'll mill them so they're nice and smooth, and uh, they'll be uh, um, six inches long uh, on this 12-inch diameter, uh, 300 millimeter uh, disc. up there like so like that a little 
You know what, it doesn't really matter if it's a longer than six inches. So I'm going to cut pretty close to the line there. Yeah, it looks pretty good there. So the heart, uh, we got to be careful with in a situation like this is, you know, we have this sloping side here, right? So the blade kind of wants to deflect a little bit. So uh, I don't know. You, you guys may have seen me do this before. Um, I use the back side of the brush, and I just kind of put a little bit of pressure on the uh, on the smooth part of the blade here until I get a a little slot started in the. Um, um, in the in the target piece there so let's see here. Can't get the, uh... so I'm putting pressure that way a little bit of feed pressure just by hand until I get a, you know, a full width slot going there, nice, kind of like that, and now I can engage the feed, and Bob's your uncle. So this is a point of rep, oops, <laughs> I hit the stop button. So this is a point of reference, I'll just set that there. And then you can have something to watch the relation. Pretty zippy, huh? Oh, that's a good, uh, that'd be a good doorstop, huh? Yeah, how come they don't make them like that? That's actually kind of a, a pleasant shape for a doorstop, huh? Maybe I'll deburr that. So, get this. So we're just going to sit it on the first flat. And you see Mr. Bozo didn't get it in line very good there. So uh, that's how out of parallel it was. All right. So, uh, people are freaking out already probably. This is sticking out of the vise a long ways. It's cast iron. It's inch and a quarter thick. It's pretty sturdy. So I'm going to bet some bozo dollars that uh, um, that this will cut just fine the way it is, even with this big face mill here. So, it, you know, we're not going to take a half inch at a time or anything like that. So let's see what happens. Let's come down and touch off. Back up. It's a little fast. Alright, let's zero that. Let's try, let's take 10. See how that behaves. There it goes. Pretty good. Yeah, I guess it's pretty light cut, but... I'm try to pick it up a little bit. Finish looks nice. Okay, so let's see here. Let's just take a quick measurement there. So this is well short of six inches. So I didn't quite saw off enough. Uh, and the other one's actually pretty close to six inches, so I want them the same. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over now, and I'll take a skim cut to clean that up and measure that one, and then I'll match this to whatever that cord length is uh, uh, on this side here after it cleans up. So, yeah. Sounds good anyway, doesn't it? Looks pretty good. It's like right there at six inches, so 
you know, I just took another ten or it was about twelve thousand off and uh, cleaned up that saw cut. So, um, yeah, let's flip it over again. Yeah, but just heavy enough to be a pain in the neck. Here. Okay, make sure we're sitting down and even. Okay, and then we'll just uh, whittle away at that until we got six inches. All right, we know we need a fair amount, so let's take uh, let's take thirty. Feel it, but it's not flapping. So we're just going to grab about the flats on this little step here. And in case you didn't know, these are a weird height from here to here, so there's no parallels that match up. So I'm going to use these as my parallels. I'm not drilling through, so it should be no problem. Get that kind of centered up there. You know, we just basically got to keep it from uh, moving around on us. We're just going to poke some holes in it. And that's all that's happening, so. Okay. All right, so I got to pick up the center here and um, and drill and tap some holes. So we got all our uh, tap tools in the back, and um, so now what I'm going to do is I just put some marks on here. What I want to do is um, just scrub it real quick on the uh, uh, abrasive paper on the surface plate here. And the reason for that is it gives me a kind of a, a, a visual um, where the, the high, highs and lows are on the plate. Get away from that dog. Dogs are right near the uh, tripod. All right, let's take a look. All right, so it's nice and smooth on the outside. Um, huh. Didn't really take much off, did it? Yeah, it's it's hitting on the outside, so I'm okay with that. Uh, so we're gonna rotary grind this. You know, clearly we're gonna start from the outside and kind of come in. So um, uh, if I touch off on the outside, it should fade out uh, towards the center, and then once it cleans up towards the center, then I'm I'm done. So let's go get that surface grinder set up for rotary grinding. I'm gonna take the uh, fence off here. So. I don't think I ever showed this. This is a fence that I fabricated. Uh, um, and what I wanted was I wanted the fence to be outside the uh, um, the size of the chuck. So let's put that back on there so you can see it. So you see that it's actually back from the edge of the, of the magnet. Um, so 
you know, you get your full magnet surface, and um, you know, you're you're almost always shimming off of that anyway to space out, um, you know, for parallel work and stuff like that. So now, once once you take that off, um, it's best practice when you put it back on to, to dust that edge off again and um, uh, and clean it up. Now, this is just mild steel; uh, it doesn't have to be anything uh, super califragilistic. Um, and um, you just have to be careful not to uh, put a ding in it, a dingus McGee, so. Alright, get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. Alright, so we're going to dress the, uh, the wheel here. We're just going to go ahead and use this one here. It's a 46 grit uh, ruby. Um, and uh, we'll dress this. And, uh, and then we got to come way up to uh, get on top of the uh, uh, the rotor grind. So we're going to use the rotary grinding head uh, or table for uh, for this job, which will be kind of fun. So we're going to use this little. Uh, this is something I've been playing around with. Uh, I made this a while ago. It's so this is to help find uh, the the center of the wheel there, so we can line the magnet up dead nuts or pretty dead nuts with the. Uh, um, with the uh, the center of the wheel there, and sits on that little that little angle there. Okay. Close. Hoisted the uh, the roto grind up here. Uh, this thing weighs a ton. Now you can see here this is a fastener going into a tap hole on the bottom of this, right? But it doesn't clear the uh, this uh, detent stop, so we got to take this little monkey off here. And um, actually, it's got a uh, um, it's, it's got dowel pins in it, and uh, the guys that design this actually uh, put a tap hole here which is kind of nice to, to help push it off of the uh, um, the dowel pins which is always a that's just a nice pro touch there right and uh, to provide that uh, that kind of feature so let's see if it works Oh, I see they get two tap holes there. Anyway. They don't have another tap hole near the lower one. Hmm. I never, I never noticed it before. Okay, so now, um, so I got two in here, and now I can rotate this little mess around here. Get to the other ones. Should be one right here. Yep. And, you know, the, the forces here are pretty low, and this doesn't have a magnet on it, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta improvise a, a little bit. And, all right. Okay, so now what I want to see here is I'm kind of at the extreme of the travel, right? So I gotta hang this off, or position this, I should say, so that I can, uh, Get the whole the whole shooting match here. Let's see, come down that way a little bit, come out a little bit. That looks pretty good. Something like that. Okay. Put some magnet on. That's good. All right, let's plug this in so you guys can see it run real quick. And then I will finish setting it up. Oop, there it goes. It's already on. 
that's the general idea. So we're just going to grind to the center, right? And uh, until we dust that surface off. cleaned up there's a little spot right there not much so I think this last pass is coming out it's gonna be it Take a while to get out there though. room to get your to get your hand under there to uh, um, pick it up. Alright, clean this. And we'll stick a disc on. My other plate um, has a 220 grit on it, so I think I'm going to put a 400 on this one. And then, um, so let's go ahead and uh, peel this. Fingernails left here. Thin, uh, super thin backing there. Huh? Interesting. All right, so what, what we do here is we peel it halfway, like so. Okay, and then we do our aligning. off. It's a nice straight edge. And voila. There she is. Ooh, nice. Let's 
try something on there. Uh, I gotta find something to. Uh, <laughs> I gotta find something to sand here. I should probably. You know what? I'm gonna do this on the other plate first. This is a little bit. Uh, let me just keep going here. Good. And then uh, just brushing off the uh, the dust. And then if you add a little bit of uh, WD-40, it kind of reduces the uh, um, effect of abrasive by about half, something like that. So if you use it wet. Instead of 400, it's 800 or something. Oh yeah, it looks really nice. All right. Beautiful. Okay.